Hello Bruins! Of the questions we get asked in the library, how to cite and use citation styles are some of the most common. To make things easy for you, we've created this series that breaks down each of the major components of the three citation styles used at KCC. This video focuses on the MLA Works Cited page. At the end of your paper, you want to include a list of every source you used while writing it. In MLA, this is called the Works Cited page. This is probably the trickiest part of using citations, since every type of source includes slightly different information. Thankfully, MLA is pretty flexible, so as long as you include all the information you have available to you, you should be fine. The entries on your Works Cited page will be alphabetized by whatever the first part of the citation is, usually the author's last name, and each entry will have a hanging indent, which means that every line but the first will be indented. The first piece of your Works Cited entry will be the author or author's last names. If the source doesn't list an author, then you can move straight to the next part, which is the title of your source. Next is something called the container. If this source was originally published as part of a larger piece, the name of that larger piece is the container. Think of an individual song contained on an album, or an article contained in an academic journal. You'll then include a version or volume and issue number here if there is one. For example, if you're citing the 10th edition of your textbook, or volume 40, issue number 2 of a journal, that would go here. For books, you then include the publisher. Next is the publication date, which can be as simple as a year. And finally, a location where the source can be found. This might include a page range, or the name of the database you use to search, or even a URL. Again, it's the location where you can find the information, not where it was made. Here are a few examples so you can see this in action. For this book, we include the author and title, but since there isn't a container here, the book was published by itself, not in a larger work, or a version number, we move on to publisher and finish with the publication date. For a journal article from a Morris database, we include the author's name, title of the article, name of the journal as our container, the volume and issue number, the publication date, and the location where we can find this information, which in this case would include both the page range of the article within the journal and the name of the database where we found this online. For a website article without an author, we would start with the title, then the name of the website as a container. We would then include the published date if there is one. If not, include the link and the date you access the page. Obviously, there are more source types than just those, but those are some of the most common formats you'll be using. To make things easier for you, our databases have a citation generation tool, which you can use to automatically build MLA citations for sources found there. Just be sure to double check these, as they are computer generated and can include some small errors. You can also find more tips for MLA on the Citation Research Guide. And as always, you can ask your Morris librarians any questions that might come up while you're working. Thanks for watching.